When I'm up there, singing, they don't understand how much I give and how it affects me. I've no control anymore. Hi, I'm Peter Travers, the movie critic for Rolling Stone, and we're going to talk about the movies again, because that's what we all do. And now is a time where there are movies everywhere. And so what's out there now? Well, the first one I'm going to mention is Elizabeth the Golden Age, and I mention it only because talk about a golden actress, that would be Kate Blanchett. She can do anything. Well, i got to say this, there's one thing she can't do, which is save this horrible, bombastic, wow! Boring beyond belief costume drama. Nothing, nothing comes to life in this. It just dies there on the screen. So if you're one of those people that just likes to look at costumes and the fabulous Miss Kate Blanchett, then maybe you like it, but please don't do it. There's other things. And the number one other thing is a movie called Control. It is the first movie directed by the famous photographer Anton Corbin. And it's shot in black and white, like a lot of his photographs are shot. And it is about Ian Curtis of Joy Division. If you don't know much about Ian Curtis, he died, hanged himself at the age of 23 in 1980. But he was the lead singer, in fact, the artistic force behind Joy Division. And they made only two albums. If you got them, they would enter your unconscious, your bloodstream and never to be forgotten. It's a movie that gets it all right. Not just the look, but the story. There's a young actor named Sam Riley who plays uh, Ian Curtis in this movie, and he is terrific. So when you watch this, I also want you to go uh, wherever you get your DVDs and get a movie called 24-Hour Party People, which is also about this period in Manchester when Joy Division was big, right before Ian Curtis's uh, suicide. And those two movies make bookends like you can't believe. If you care anything about music, you're going to love this movie. They're called Joy Division. This is called Transmission. So what else is out there? There's a movie called We Own the Night. This is a movie uh, directed and written by James Gray. And it stars Joaquin Phoenix and Mark Wahlberg as brothers. Only Joaquin's brother is a club guy, he's into drugs, he's got the Latina girlfriend played by Ava Mendez. He's living this kind of life that's just so cool and his brother Mark Wahlberg is a cop. And their father, played by Robert Duvall, is not just a cop, he's the police chief. And yeah, it works as an action movie, it just moves as an action movie, but James Gray is not the kind of filmmaker to just do a standard action movie. He makes things that actually show emotion. So the odd thing about this movie is that it wears its heart on its sleeve. Here's an action movie where you're supposed to be cool all the time. James Gray makes movies where people actually show their feelings and emotions. At the Cannes Film Festival where this debuted in May, people booed it. There were some people that said, ugh, we don't like this. They also mistook the message of the movie. They thought because it was a cop family that suddenly James Gray was all about fascism and law and order. Nothing could be further from the truth. The guy has a real feeling, a visceral feeling for film, and he makes movies like a born filmmaker. So don't listen to the boos, don't listen to anybody else. Go and judge for yourself and see We Own the Night and control. And remember, forget Elizabeth, wait for Kate Blanchett when she plays Bob Dylan in I'm Not There, and then you're gonna see a great one. I'm Peter Travers. <laughs>